Information technology implementation failures have been the topic of many research studies. Technology implementation literatures are filled with articles and commentary about project failures. In the midst of advancing technology platforms, implementation remains one of the main challenge. According to the Gartner 2015 report, significant number of technology implementations projects fail. Despite the focus on delivering better customer service and advanced at systems, 52% of companies faced material operational disruption at the time of go live. Further, 60% of organizations failed to realize the business benefits they expected. But why? Multiple causes have been cited in the literature. They are primarily related to project management, engineering principles and organizational change. Specific issues that have seemed to be recurring themes are leadership commitment and support, setting and managing expectation, failure to manage organizational change, not involving stakeholders, poor project management, communications, as well as inadequacy of training and knowledge transfer. When it comes to developing countries, the success of implementation is even more challenging. For instance, in the last decades, Africa has been investing significant amount of its resource into technology and infrastructure. Unfortunately, the return on investment was not fully realized. Africa has suffered numerous technology transfer setbacks. Why? There are numerous case studies and publications on information systems literature that explored the causes of technology implementation failure in developing countries. Researchers identified the following factors. Unique to developing countries. Cultural setting. Technology applicability. Lack of infrastructure. Rush to catch up. As well as top-down approach. Lack of accountability for results. One size fits all. And top-down prescriptive approaches pushed by international agencies for donor-funded projects. Let us take a closer look at the major issues that hinder the success of implementations in Africa. First, cultural issue. The cultural roots of the technology and the environment where it will be used are not considered in technology selection. System designers create technology for an industrialized country context, and are transferred to African countries with no consideration of its applicability. The local conditions of the developing countries is often not considered in the original design. The technology acquired from developed nations is often ill-suited to the developing countries, and a considerable design gap is therefore likely, leading to the system adoption failure. Second, rush for catch-up. Developing nations often rush to import new technology without considering all available technologies, with no assessment of the direct and indirect effects, as well as without fully understanding of the needs to be satisfied and its strategic importance. In addition, developing nations often choose technology based on imperfect information with limited understanding and awareness of the full range of available alternatives. Often selecting outdated, obsolete technology or technology irrelevant to the recipient's needs that often rely upon aid from international donors and non-governmental organizations. In developing countries technology implementation projects are often spearheaded by government. These types of projects come with mandated requirements that constrain the implementation success. The top-down approach that many donor-funded projects take is contrary to a model that advocates user involvement. These projects are often managed by outsiders with cultural constraint to involve the local community in the implementation process and facilitate the handoff for success. Research also shows that the one-size-fits-all prescriptive project management approach 
don't allow for flexibility to tailor the methods and the technology to suit the local environment. In addition, there is too much emphasis within aid agencies on strong procedures and guidelines, but limited focus on accountability for results and implemented technology sustainability. This is because at the end of the project, when the external experts leave, there is often insufficient fund to sustain the implemented technology and thus the likelihood of failure increases. Fortunately, the future is bright. Africa is in a position to benefit from past technology failures. But it must realize technologies will only be fully exploited if the knowledge of how to put them to use is understood, widely disseminated and applied. Africa needs to seek its diaspora's involvement in technology transfer. At the same time, the diasporas also need to actively advocate and participate in knowledge transfer, as well as vigorously support Africa's economic growth.